four minutes to make your website more accessible, so more inclusive for everyone. Let's get started. Let's get started with be having better color contrast. So people with low visions or cataracts or maybe just standing outside on a sunny day using your app will need better color contrast or good color contrast ratio to enjoy your content. So make sure to make sure that we have a good um, ratio, we can use multiple tools online, and there's even a tool now in Google Chrome DevTools. So if you open the DevTools, click on a color swatch, you're going to see if your ratio is good enough. And even in the color picker on top, there's a white line. And any color uh, above the white line will be considered uh, inaccessible compared to its background. So easy to make better choices. Resizable text. People will and can um, resize your text, uh, zoom in on your web page, or change their default, uh, default font size in their browser. So it's really important to make use of relative Unix like M's or REMs. Um, let's take a look at an example of a Buy Now button. Uh, the WCAG says that your web page should be usable at 200% zoom in. So if you use the font size in pixel and padding in pixel, then the button won't zoom in, so it's not a good result. Um, if you use the font size in REM but padding in pixel, then the button will, will grow a little bit, but then the padding will be very tight. Uh, sometimes we set height on some elements. Problem with that is, again, if your font zoom, then it will overflow your button. So best practice is to use font size in RAM and padding in M's just to make sure that everything grows uh, together. Good edit structures. People that use screen readers have quick ways and shortcut to navigate through your content quickly. Uh, one of them is go through uh, by editing levels. So make sure that your, all your editing levels are in the right order. So uh, they don't feel maybe lost or maybe like they have missed important pieces of information. Uh, visible focus state. Really important for keyboard uh, users. They absolutely need to see where they are and what's maybe coming up next. Uh, it's a common practice to remove the, the focus state because maybe designers, or we don't like the blue default outline or the dotted line. That's fine to remove it. We just need to make sure that we had the, our focus state back, and it's, it doesn't need to be the same for every element, can be different, just need to be very visible and super functional, doesn't need to be uh, beautiful. And write keyboard interactions. So if you build a web page, <clears throat> there's a good chance that you're going to have uh, interactions, so you're going to either use links or buttons, or please don't use divs for that. Um, so link or hyperlink, Anything related to content, so if I go to a new page or I keep or new content on the same page, screen reader will announce it as a link, which is good, and there's a keyboard support with the enter key. Any uh, button, so anything used for interaction, so um, if you need to open a model or submit a form or stuff like that, use a button for that. It's going to be announced as button. So screen reader user, again, will know uh, what kind of interaction it's coming. And there's default keyboard support with enter and space key. And div is only used only for structuring your page. I know we can attach GS event, like on clicks or keyboard events, but there's no semantic meaning. They don't get announced, so please never use div for anything uh, that can create an interaction. So we have better color contrast, resizable text, good content structure, visible focus state, and right keyboard interaction. These small changes can make or break interactions or a web experience for some users. So use them carefully, and um, because it's our duty to make the web accessible and more uh, inclusive for everyone. Thank you.